Right, as soon as I've got this all set up, I might as well push the bearing onto my new crown wheel. So I'm just doing a dummy run here. This is my old one. It's the bearing. It's just got it set up. Yeah. Um, make sure I've got enough travel. So that should work, shouldn't it? That pushes on that. And that goes down. Need a uh, some kind of ring there to push it the last bit, pushing on this area because this will project through slightly. I need to find a piece of tube that's that diameter. That should take care of the last bit of pushing when it's almost fully on. Just need to go the last bit onto the seat. So like before, I'm going to put this in the oven just to get it warm, not hot. And then the crown wheel is currently in the deep freeze. So we'll, um, we'll reconvene in about an hour. There we are. Crown wheel cam. Dum, 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 dum. This will get covered in condensation now. You can see the ice forming on it. So I'll put it on this wood. I'm using a glove to try not to warm it up with my body heat. Right, now we'll go and get the warmed up bearing. facing the right way. Bloody <laughs> look at that! Oh, oh well. Oh, dum, dum, dum. oh actually it's it's already gone. That's interesting. It's already as the bearing cool as it hit the cold crown wheel it's already locked on. Yeah so I just need to make sure it's seated all the way so I'm still going to put this ring on here. Well, that's the way to do it, boys and girls, I would suggest. Makes life so much easier. I can't remember where I saw that, but I have used it a few times for... I've used it for brakes, putting brake calipers in. So I'm just going to make sure it's seated all the way. Give it a good shove. It, it looks... Oh no, it had to go a little bit further. Look, nice. Oh, this, is, this is so cheap and nasty. Give it a good shove. Alright. Yeah, that, that went on. It had about another two millimetres to go. So, I'm just getting ready to put this back together. So I need to slide the crown wheel over there. Uh, bolt it back up to here. Before I do that, I'm going to put some grease on everything inside there. And before I do that, I'm just warming it back up in the sunshine. So I'm just warming it back up in the sun because um, it's so cold it just keeps getting covered in condensation. Right, the crown wheel's on. Nuts are all done up. Bolts are through. It's well seated. Um, so the next thing I want to do is check what the torque settings on these should be and uh, I need to get some lock wire to, to go through twist, go through twist, go all the way around. Okay, now I'm going to reassemble this into the axle housings on the banjo uh, centre section. And there's a particular way of doing this. I've watched a few YouTube videos, um, which do leave a few things out. I've read this book by Verne. I've also looked it up in here, 3738, um, which explains it. And basically there's several principles at work here. Um, let's just get a pointer. Yeah, a punch pointer. Right, you'll see in each of these axle housings there's a there's a race for these tapered bearings one each side 
and I've drawn a picture. So here's, here's the bearing race each side and here are the tapered roller bearings and these are the axle housings that bolt on. You can see the ring of bolts there to the centre section. Now there's a gasket here and a gasket here but those gaskets aren't just gaskets. When you buy them you get a pack and there's several gaskets in there of different thicknesses. They also function as shims. So why do you need shims? Well, if you think about it, if you're going around a tight bend, the axle is going to be pushed to one side or the other. So if it's being pushed that way, you want the force to be taken on that bearing. And if it's being pushed that way, going around a corner the other way, you'd want the force to be taken on that bearing. Now, if you look at this way, suppose the going around a corner and the, the wheels and axles are being pushed that way. Um, what you don't want is that bearing to be loose. So all the force, the sideways force, actually gets slammed into the crown wheel and the pinions. So it gets forced onto this pinion. Now, if you're just pootling about and not cornering very fast, um, so well made, it would probably take that for a while without too much trouble. Um, but really you want to have no play that way before you even start thinking about the crown wheel and pinion play. So there's different ways of doing this that have been described. Um, but the main things are, first of all, you've got to get the side to side play here just taken out. And the way you do that is with the shims. You put different gaskets in until it's just there's no lateral movement and you can just spin the crown wheel by putting your hand in here and flicking it with your finger or grabbing the ends of the axles and turning them the same way. There should be slight drag but no lateral movement. So once you've done that, this is what I've been advised to do as well, um, you remember what shims you've got here and here and you add them together and just make a note of that um, because then later on you're going to be looking at the um, free play between the pinion gear and the crown wheel and that's measured by once you fit the crown wheel which is your next step sorry your pinion assembly you rotate it back and forth and use a dial gauge here which I do have and there shouldn't be more than a certain amount of play there should be a tiny bit of free play but not much and they certainly shouldn't be binding if they're binding what you would do is you would um, put a thicker gasket there and a thinner one by the same amount that you thicken that one you subtract from that one which would move the whole lot that way just a tad um, it would keep the distance between the bearing races here the same but you'd have moved the whole lot that way tiny bit and then it wouldn't bind anymore so that's they're the principles of how you adjust this and I've actually used a mixture of what's recommended in both these books plus comments underneath some of the YouTube videos that I've watched from people older than me and more experienced and I made a list so it's the complete idiot list basically if I work through this list uh, point by point ticking them off um, I'll get to the end 16 steps so that's the plan now the other thing recommended is that you cut a hole in your bench or something like that I don't really want to cut a hole in my bench I know it's a bit grubby but it's sound um, so I've made a mini bench out of trestles I've got blocks on the bottom to stop it falling around I've got bungee cords holding the deck on cut a hole I can now slide my um, axle housing in and out quite easily um, reach the bolt hole spin it round put the banjo on and then drop everything in from the top Assuming I've got enough ceiling clearance, which I don't know, I might not have. I might have to tip it a bit. Anyway, it, it's, it's, it's just right for the job. So here's the gasket set. Um, there's actually a load in there. It gives you a, a colour code as to the sizes. Um, so what do we got? 0709053. Okay, and what does it say? I mean, these instructions were kind of written years and years and years ago. Um, right, fit passenger side axle housing to the banjo. Passenger side, right now, I have to get this right. Um, on this car, 
that's right. So standing behind the car looking forwards, this would be on the right. And they sit on the left side of the car in America, so we're on the right here in the UK, so it's really confusing. So that is the passenger side. Yeah, that's definitely the passenger side. Well, it's the right hand side anyway. Fit that to the banjo case and use, start with the thinnest gasket. Yeah, well, the recommendations vary there, but let's start, let's do what it says. Let's start with the thinnest gasket. And there's no point putting all the bolts in because you're going to probably end up taking them out again. So first of all, I need to clean all this up. This is old gasket here and, and just make sure the case is clean and then I'll do that. Right, so I've cleaned that one up by scraping it with a razor blade and um, some scotch right. I've just got the other one to do now and then the same goes for the sides of the banjo housing. So just to recap, passenger side or right hand side if you're looking at the car from the back. Thinnest gasket to start with which is white. Um, there's a lip here so I'm going to put the gasket on there and then put the banjo onto it. I've got, um, I don't know if you can see them where are they, got little marks here, two marks there and two marks there which I did earlier so we make sure they match up then I'm going to do it up with maybe three bolts um, because this is going to be on and off a few times and no sealant not yet anyway right these are my old diff bolts which are all mangled because do you remember I was hammering sockets on them to get them undone these are the new ones apparently they're not ordinary bolts they have a particularly fine thread and they also have a kind of shoulder just there which helps stop oil leaks and the head is quite deep um, that's why they're kind of special okay we've already made a mistake um, the plan basically is put, put a gasket each side put the whole of this into there without any of the pinion assembly put the other axle tube on housing um, and then measure if there's any side to side play and if there is thin down the gasket slightly but you're supposed to start with well according to this this is from a different book um, start with 008 to 0.01 gasket to begin with whereas this one so start with the thinnest um, yeah <laughs> okay I think the point is at this point the purpose of doing this is to work out this plus this gasket what you need to get these bearings just so there's no lateral movement and um, it's the total that matters when it comes to doing the pinion play um, then you'll probably start adding one and taking a bit away from each side but the total should remain the same so I'm in terms of determining what the total thickness required is I'm okay to carry on actually so right you'll notice that my bench is now higher than it was yes well try again just be careful not to smash my ceiling <coughs> ceiling lights Right, that's better. So the plan now is put another gasket on. I mean, we don't know what size we've got to use, so just pick one, do it up, and see if this binds. If it binds, we put a thinner gasket in. We keep going from there. And, um, I would rather put this on the axle housing actually, but. Um, Right, my ceiling was not high enough, so I'm back on the ground. <laughs> um, so I've bolted this on. So that's that's the smallest. That's 0 0.009 inches, which is one of the bigger gaskets. And um, if I grab an axle, you should be able to turn it. So 
when you turn that, the other one goes around. It's crud all over the end. There's no latch. If I really tug either way, there's no lateral movement. And also, if I put my fingers inside, I can actually find the. crown wheel and turn in my fingers so it's what they said which is there should be a light drag um, there should be no play and you should be able to turn the axle here with your hand and I can do that quite easily both the same way so so that fits what they said um, also once this has got silicone on it it may actually be incredibly slightly thicker so I'm going to use that as my um, my total gasket thickness therefore will be point what is that 012 so I need to write that down somewhere the next thing I'm going to do is take this end off again um, take the axle and crown wheel and diff and everything out put this back on my test stand so I've got nice easy access to the banjo and then um, I've got to insert the actually no I'm going to take both sides off so I'm just left with the banjo case because I've got to put the pinions assembly in which involves heating the end of it recorded that I've taken everything apart again it didn't take long so the next thing is to heat around here with the blowtorch and then tap this into place in there but I'm going to cool this down again because it seems to work quite well before I start heating this so this is going in the freezer and I'll just get this gasket off while I wait here and then we'll come back to it before everything is greased so let me get on I know you're gonna say you didn't film you didn't end up filming it going in I was like no I got a bit annoyed with it to be honest so I took out the vice I put it on the bench facing upwards I could see the problem was that I was not quite I was going in slightly at an angle and it was jamming um, so, so it's just a case of um, tapping the top of it um, and then kind of eyeballing it from all sides to see if I was a little bit off and then sort of tapping more to that side to get it level and Oh, and then it finally started to go in. I mean, it had to hit it pretty hard. This was around 70 something degrees. Uh, that's uh, C, so that's where 100 is boiling. So, you know, on, on, on manuals and videos say that um, this doesn't have to be really hot. It just has to be warm. Um, so, I mean, I was on the hot side, I would say. But it didn't, didn't, I wouldn't say it went in easily. Um, but it has gone in and um, you hit it until it you get a change in the tone as this ring that that is the kind of bearing surface for the two bearings presumably bottoms out so you're not hitting it in until this hits this flimsy plate here you're hitting it in until that double uh, bearing race um, hits something and it's flush with the surface here now so that would kind of make sense so next thing then is to um, somehow hold this still while I turn this nut which will push the end bearing in just a touch until we start to feel a slight drag because this is the point where um, you when you turn this basically this you should require about 15 inch pounds to do it now, 
I don't know if this is going to work. You can make a special tool if you happen to have the end of a... Uh, this might go on with a bit of fettling. Basically I've 3D printed it because basically um, 15 inch pounds is not much torque at all and a 3D print might be able to withstand that I suspect. It looks like I'm going to have to print another one slightly larger but you get the idea. Right this does actually work I don't know if you could see that but the print it's not pretty but the print is on. Uh, the torque wrench is in. 15 inch pounds is like there. So if I just hold this can I torque it to 15 inch pounds without this 3D print disintegrating? And the answer is, well, that's 20 there. So yeah, you can. Oop. It's not happy. It's on the border. <laughs> oh, hang on, that needs to be in a bit more. Oop. God, right. Here we go. <laughs> That's 15 there. Right, all I've got to do now is tighten this up until there's a drag of 15 inch pounds on this shaft. Now, of course, the manuals never say, how are you going to hold this still while you do that? Well, one way is to get the end of a um, prop shaft with the correct splines and um, weld something to it like a bar sticking out so you've basically made your own socket um, but I don't have one of those um, so I'm just looking at the hole here for the pin I could put a tube over it like that with a high tensile steel bolt straight through there um, it might be strong enough I mean I just need to get that to turn um, but yeah uh, these things are sent to challenges, aren't they? Here we have the homemade, uh, don't know what you call it, input shaft holder. Uh, tube just fits, hole, high tensile bolt through the pinhole for the uh, prop shaft, homemade spanner. As you can see, it looks disgusting, but it's working. See, I can easily turn that nut. And I'm just going to go until I feel slight binding. And then I'll put the uh, torque wrench on and get it to 15 inch pounds to just turn it. So there's no binding at the moment, so I need to go a bit more yet. Okay, I've 3D printed this adapter. Do you remember the earlier one split? And this is now printed. 100% infill which means it's solid. Um, here's my inch pound mini torque wrench. So it just goes in there. Now I need to measure the inch pounds till it turns or the plastic shutters. So what do we got? 20, oh it's a bit too much. Ooh. Well, when it's turning, it's 10, and to break the kind of seal and the start, to get it started, it peaks at 20. See, it's 10 all the way around, but to just get it to go, it's more like 20. Um, so actually, I'm, I think that's, I'm probably happy with that. I mean, it's supposed to be 15, so it's thereabouts, isn't it? You can see this just has, well, clearly it needs a bit of modification, but it's got two splines in it, which is enough. Okay, so it's not something you'd have, you'd use repeatedly, but if you're just doing this the once or twice in your life, it's fine. So the next thing that goes on is that, then the locking ring, and you do them up against each other, check the uh, what's the word turning force again there and then if it's all good hammer the tabs up and down to lock the washers right um, so we're going to do this one up tight against it as tight as I can get So 
So, bend that way, that way, that way, that way, that way. Okay, and there's just a little bit of resistance to turning. So, what's the next thing? Um, I need to do up the nuts on the crown wheel and put lock wire through them. And I have lock wire and I have lock wire pliers. Next thing I'm going to do is lock wire my crown wheel bolts. Now, there's different ways to do this, but you can see if you do it like that in pairs, so you basically put one loop through, one loop round, twist, 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 round to here, one loop through, one loop round, twist, 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 tuck it under, and it's tensioned that way so that the bolt is unlikely to want to undo itself that way. Same goes for that one. So I'm going to follow this method. I've seen them where you, you twist and go all the way around in a ring, but I suppose the idea of this is if one piece of wire came off, the remaining six are still okay. So I've tightened all these up. I can't actually find a torque anyway, any, anywhere. Some people said the early Fords, there were no torque specs. Torque specs came into being when it came to things like cylinder head bolts. Um, before that, it was just good and tight. Um, and then it spread from there, but it was mainly engine parts. So I've done these up pretty tight and then moved them on to the next hole that lines up with the lot wire holes. You can see there, they've all been tightened up. So I can get this little punch through, which means the wire should go through easily. And it's the same all the way around. So I'm going to wire them in pairs, copying the arrangement in that photograph. You can see what I've done here, basically, I haven't used a lot of wire. Um, the holes are quite big, so unless I use very thick lock wire, um, the nuts could actually turn quite a bit before the lock wire sort of restricted them. So it seems to me that the plan that the previous builder did, which was to use these split pins, cotter pins, um, was actually more sensible. I mean, the nut can only turn a fraction before the pin binds it, stops it undoing any further. So. I've done it the way the previous person did it um, and I've been very careful to make it each one extremely neat. They don't, they don't rattle about and they're just tapped in with a hammer so they're fairly tight as well. So the next step in this marathon axle building uh, sesh is to um, bolt the left hand axle tube onto the banjo, slide this lot into it um, using the gaskets we used before, um, do it up and then check the amount of play between the pinion gear and this gear using a dial indicator which I have there. Um, um, basically if there's too much play you need to move your crown wheel that way a bit. is the thicker gasket we used earlier. Right, let's just double check. That's the top, that's the left side, bottom of the banjo is that way. Axles in, crown wheels in, engaged with the pinion. So now I'm going to put this tube on with this wafer thing gasket. This is one of those moments where you need to just stop, think, have a cup of tea. What have we got? We haven't got it. Uh, these are meshing, if you like, too well. There's no free play here at all. 
So what I need to do is move my crown wheel that way relative to the pinion. So I need to make that, if I make that gasket thicker, this bearing seat moves that way. I need to move this bearing seat the same way that way. So I need to make this one thinner and this one thicker. At the moment, that's the thin one, that's the thick one. So if anything, I need to swap them around, like I had originally, actually. Um, I'm going to swap them around and see where we are. If I end up with too much play, then I'll just make them both equal. And that will probably get me there in two or three steps. That's very easy to get this wrong, isn't it? So, let's just get this right. Yeah, that's right. So currently the blue is the thicker one, that's 0 0.009. So I'm going to put the white one there and put the blue one the other side. And then if I've got too much play, I'll make them 50-50 equal size. So hopefully within two more cycles of this playing about, I should get it about right. Right, I've got I've got clamps on the ends of the axles to stop them turning. Um, I don't know if you can hear this, but you might hear a slight click. It's really subtle. There. See that little click noise? Right, that's the backlash. Right, this is a dial indicator. Um, it's just a cheap one. Basically you turn that, set it to naught. And it tells you that each each interval is 0 0.01 millimeters. So if I just touch that, see how it moves. Right, and then there's this magnetic thing to hold it in place. So in theory, if I put it into one of the splines, sort of like that. So as you rotate it, as the spline comes round, it pushes the lever. That. Right, that's what I'm trying to measure and then I'll convert it to inches. So it's got a magnetic base, a locking clampy system. Um, I've pre-tensioned this so it's, it's already pushed in slightly. I've set the dial to naught and now I'm going to turn it and see if it, as this clicks how far it goes. Here we go. Right hear the click there ten times 0 0.01 millimeters it's 0 0.1 millimeters and I went using Google 0 0.1 millimeters is 0 0.003937 inches which is about 0 0.004 inches and according to According to Verne's manual, the Verne Tidal booklet, it should be between 0 0.003 and 0 0.008. So it's about right. So that's good. So now I'm going to take it apart one more time and silicone the gaskets and bolt it all up um, finally. The final assembly. I've done a bit more reading. Um, I've seen it written that you can smear a bit of silicone on the gaskets. The trouble with that is you're increasing the thickness and it actually does matter. I mean, you want to get rid of matter, but it does. So, the, most people recommend you put them on dry. You might use a bit of grease just to stick it. To this when you're mounting it up to the um, the banjo so the, the gasket doesn't kind of get trapped um, but this side is fine because I've got it on my special table I can put this side together without any problem um, I may use just a tiny, tiny film of grease 
it is tempting, isn't it? And let's be honest. Basically, it's something that doesn't increase the the thickness. They came. They had washers on them. Some of them had these uh, this type on them. Now I've looked at all the diagrams, and uh, nowhere do you use washers. Also, the thread on these bolts doesn't go all the way to the end. The intention of that is that it helps stop oil leaking out. And the other thing is, you should never put a tap into the threads here because these are um, they're like a tight fit. They're precision machined so that um, you know the threads exactly match. In fact, they should only go in finger tight about a third of the way. Um, and again, that stops oil leaks. So that's probably why these are quite expensive. And the other thing is the head's quite deep. So I'm not going to use any washers because I can't see any evidence that anyone ever ever has um, from the factory anyway. Now, um, I've got a line. My two marks are there by this hole. So let me just get that lined up. Right. Let's check the marks on the case. There they are. Now what I found is if you put it on at a bit of an angle like you know, like that and then get this bolt to start to turn like that. Just check my marks as to the line, yes. When you then drop it down properly and the two kind of interlock um, it's in the right place if you try and twist it around because your holes are misaligned you risk then having the gasket in the wrong place the hole in the gasket in the wrong place I found if you get the one in there before you drop it down all the way um, the others will all line up be fine here's my nice ring of bolts um, the next thing is what torque do I do them up to well no one really knows, but I've been on the forums and one of the suggestions, which sounds reasonable, is 40 foot-pounds if they're a reasonably tight fit. If they just go in loose, then not as much as that. Maybe 30, 35, but that's just somebody's opinion. But um, the, the, there is no actual number, so uh, that would seem reasonable. Right, this is set to 37. Seems to be a reasonable compromise. It's still pretty tight. Um, yeah. yeah. Finally. So both sides are done up to 37 foot-pounds, I've got a little bit of play so I'm pretty happy with that, I've just got to put the wheels back on now, um, at some point I'll think about hydraulic brakes but for now I'll just put the backing plates on and put the wheels back on just so I can uh, wheel it around the workshop. So at risk of being really boring, I'm just going to recap what I did. Now I know from experience what I'm doing a bit better. Um, first of all, don't put the pinion in. Um, just put the crown wheel and the axles in. Do up the um, axle tubes. See if there's any lateral movement on these two bearings side to side. If there is, um, use thinner gaskets. Make one of these thinner until you can just turn, if you grab both axles with your hand and turn them in the same direction, there should be some drag, but you should be able to turn them with, with your hands freely. Um, or put your hand in here and with your fingers you can turn the crown wheel. Again, 
it shouldn't just spin completely freely there should be some drag on the bearings but obviously it shouldn't be bound tight either so once you've done that remember the thickness of that gasket and that gasket and add them together because you've got to keep the total of that value all the time then take the axle tube this one off take take the axle out with the crown wheel um, take this tube off axle tube off put your banjo in the vise um, and then think about getting the pinion assembly in um, which involves heating this end to expand it and then tapping it in with a hammer I have to admit I got mine up to about 70 75 um, that's on Celsius scale um, and I had to hit it quite hard to get it in when it's in this bearing the out the arch of the two bearings should be f this diagram's wrong but it should be flush with the surface of the case and in theory you can hear a change in the tone as you hit it as it as it is the bearing um, shells if you like it's like a double shell hits its uh, seat can't go any further once you've done that um, you've still not got the crown in or the axle tubes on you then connect your mini torque wrench to it somehow I used a 3d printed adapter and it turn the big nut here to compress the bearings until there's some drag and that drag should be about 15 inch pounds not foot pounds inch pounds it's just a moderate amount of drag on the bearings once you've done that put the lock washer in put your second nut on holding the first one still so it doesn't tighten up it even more um, do up the second one against it check the drag again that it hasn't changed it's still 15 inch pounds if that's good bend the tabs up and down up and down alternating so now you've got your pinion set up um, put this axle tube back on thread your crown wheel and your axles and differential and everything in um, put this one on with the same gaskets you used before and now what you're trying to find out is how much how tightly are these two binding to each other Bearing in mind they're both new, so there's no wear, you might expect it, that the crown wheel needs to be a bit sort of more that way. Um, so you put your dial gauge, you do up, do up the bolts, put your dial gauge on here, and where the splines are, um, you attach this little sensor, and you sh there should be a little bit of, of like um, space between the gears here, so you'll get just a tiny little bit of free play and that should be between 0 0.003 and 0.01 inches on the dial gauge to that of spline movement in a rotating sort of way um, if it's too tight then you need to move the crown wheel that way and the way you do that is you move this bearing shell that way by making the bearing shell remember is in the axle tube it's not part of the banjo center case so to move it that way you put a thicker gasket in here and then you thin that one down by the same amount that you've made that one thicker by so when you add them together they're the same so you've still got the same preload on these two bearings and then you try again um, if it's too loose if you've got too much play then you need to bring this bearing shell that way which means um, making this gasket thinner and that gasket thicker by the same amount um, and you bolt it all up and you try again so um, some of the guides talk about the gaskets but only in terms of reducing this backlash they don't really or only in passing mention that you've got to set the preload on these two bearings first they just say, oh, well, if you've got, um, if, if there's not enough backlash, if these are too tight, then you need to um, make that one thicker and that one thinner. But that might lead you to just adding more layers here and not realizing you've got to subtract it here. And in any case, 
how do you know what the total amount of gasket both added together ought to be? The only way you know that is by um, setting the preload on these two first before you even put the pinion in. Um, so I kind of worked that out in the end, but um, hopefully I'm saving you the trouble by just summarising it here.